Today we're going to replace the valley pan gasket, which is located under the intake manifold. Well, like all car jobs, replacing a gasket is real easy. Getting to it is a job. This is the knock sensor. I'm going to unplug that. This is the uh, oil level indicator. I'll unplug that. Um, this guy is the throttle position. I'll unplug that. And I'll unplug a couple other things too. So, so the trick with disconnecting the fuel injectors. Uh, what you'll read online is you want to unhook each one. There's a spring lock that goes around each fuel injector, but I don't do that. I disconnect the coils. Then on the driver's side only, the number eight cylinder is removed uh, separately on a pigtail. On the passenger side, all four are together. Then you remove the two nuts that hold the junction box together and you just grab it firmly, yank it, and it's free. There you go. Just fold it right out of the way. There's your injectors. Now for this job we're going to leave the fuel rail on there. I don't need to take the fuel rail off. Um, you can also get the intake manifold off without having to remove the wires that go to the uh, battery. All right, on the driver's side, again, with the uh, coil connections removed and your two nuts removed, just grab the junction box firmly, give it a tug. There you go, you're disconnected from your fuel injectors, and then, like I said, there actually is enough play to get the uh, um, intake manifold off, but what I'm going to do this time, I think, is uh, disconnect the wires to the alternator and just fold this over and out of the way. All right, the fuel injector clips, real quick, um, if you go online to e38.org, Roadfly, Beamer Board, those places, what they have you do is they have you take this uh, clip and they have you use a pick to remove the tang off of there. And it doesn't fly off, so you can do that. But again, I've learned that you can just pull it right off. All right, it's time to undo the manifold bolts. See if I can get it out. Oh, I forgot one hose. That's not too bad. All right, I disconnected that. Back and out she comes. Well, anytime you take your intake manifold off, replace your oil separator. You can get to everything nice and easy. Um, 
If uh, this diaphragm in here ever breaks, you'll be blowing gray smoke out your exhaust. You'll think it's coolant, but it's really this diaphragm has failed. So go ahead and replace that. It's about 70 bucks. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Now is also a good time to inspect your injectors. You know, I've never seen anyone complain about their injectors fouling up, no matter what kind of fuel they use. Um, the only time I heard about replacing fuel injectors are from the people that sell fuel injectors. So if you want to look them over, if you think they're really dirty, you can hose them off with some carburetor cleaner or something. But for the most part, don't worry about them. All right, so this is a cover over top of the valley pan. Um, and of course the gasket is underneath, which we'll get to eventually, but this is just a dust cover. There's nothing to it. There's no need to take it off. You'll notice that it's under the water pump tubes. Now normally I would have to take the water pump off, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try something different. I'm going to try and take the accumulator off the back and disconnect them from the back instead of the front because I really didn't want to take the water pump off if I didn't have to. Now, this is how you know it's leaking. When you peer down there and you see coolant and what you have is bad camera work. Right there. Where's my finger? Okay, right there, there's a hole. And as the valley pan gasket leaks, it'll go down that hole and it'll exit out of the bell housing in front of the flywheel. And you want to make sure that none of your hoses back here, and you have a pile of them. Again, sorry about the crappy camera work. But you have a pile of hoses back here. You want to make sure it's not one of your hoses because you don't want to tear this whole car apart just to find out you have a hose leak back there. But I know I don't. There it is right there. Coolant. Right there by the weep hole. Okay, my plan worked. I've taken the accumulator off. There's three bolts on each side. So once I removed all three bolts with the 10 millimeter socket and it was one quarter inch to get back there. Uh, the pipes came loose and now I can remove them from the water pump without taking the water pump off. So that's always nice. So now they're out. There's the valley pan. I'm going to have to remove the knock sensors. Uh, and then I'll remove these bazillion bolts that hold the valley pan in place and I'll show you those details. So are you ready for the big ugly secret that is the valley pan gasket? Well, the valley pan gasket is not a gasket at all. It is nothing more than a bead of silicone. So, if you pay $70, or is it $80, $79, I think, for a valley pan gasket, and you get this pan, you're going to be very disappointed because it's going to have a bead of silicone around it. Now, this is all smushed out. When you get yours, it's going to be a real thin bead of silicone going all the way around there. So, I say screw that. I can make my own gasket to put around here. So I'm going to fashion a gasket to go around here and put it back on. Now, what it does, let me zoom in here so we can get some detail. So what the valley pan does, what its function is, Its function, since it's shaped like a boat here, as you can see, it takes the coolant and it keeps it up against the cylinder here. And so it displaces the coolant 
to keep it up on the cylinder. That's what the valley pan does. And there are the channels that go back around into the engine. So there it is. I think mine was leaking somewhere around here, but I don't know. Difficult to say. Got all kinds of trash in here. Oil, gunk. I'll clean all that up, fashion a gasket, and we get to put it all back together. Now this plastic piece is just like a dust cover, you know, because it's a hollow boat hull. So if you try and take it off, all you'll end up doing is breaking off these tabs here. And just to reveal an empty void, it's just a void covering. So don't mess with the dust cover, I'll call it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my silicone and I'm going to go all the way around the valley pan gasket just like the original. I was going to make a gasket out of uh, fiber but it was turning out to be too much of a pain so I'm going to go back to what the manufacturer did. Alright there we go one valley pan gasket made out of silicone ready to go back on. So I'm going to drop it in place. There's two holes in the front and three in the back so it's idiot proof. So I'm going to just uh, set it in place and then I'm going to leave it there for a little while. Alright there it is all back together. Uh, they're only finger tight. I'll let the silicone set up overnight and then tomorrow I'll torque down the bolts. While everything is exposed, I wanted to talk about installing this tube. This runs from the back of the intake manifold to the oil separator in the front of the engine. Uh, so the way this works is you will install this and you will slide it all the way on. Then you will put the intake manifold back on and then you will take a punch and you will drive it back so it connects to the intake manifold. So you'll just get on this thing like this and you'll drive it back and it'll go on to the intake manifold. So here's the intake manifold and here's the tube again. And when you drive it on, you'll just, it'll just drive right on to the end of your diaphragm, uh, your oil separator on the back of your intake manifold. So that's what you're doing. And then a clip goes on here to hold it in place. So. All right, before I put the tubes in, I need to install the knock sensors. They're pretty easy if you keep the plug forward because it comes around and plugs into the junction box then you can't disorient them. The long one goes in the back and the one with the shorter lead goes to the front. So just bolt these guys back on just as easy as that. Alright, the auxiliary water pump is in place. All new hoses are connected up. Uh, you do want to replace your hoses. BMW hoses are very flexible. Uh, that means they kind of uh, tear easily. So with the intake manifold off, it's much easier to access those hoses back there and replace them. Moving the rear accumulator uh, instead of the water pump up front to get these tubes out. Uh, that worked great and I'm real happy about that. I really did not want to take that water pump off of there. That's uh, pretty involved and I just put this stupid thing on there. Last thing I wanted to do was take it all apart again. Alright, one more thing before we put the intake manifold on. We want our knock sensors uh, laying forward. And we want to put the pipe that connects the uh, diaphragm in the back of the 
intake manifold to the tube that eventually goes to the oil separator and back into the crankcase. We want to slide it all the way up. Then we're going to take our punch and we're going to drive it back onto the intake manifold to set it in place. And then there's a clip that goes on. So we'll get that in place. And we're ready to install the intake manifold. Sometimes your gaskets don't want to stay in place. Uh, gravity will work against you on this job. Uh, it, uh, it can be fun. So uh, with the new gaskets in place, we'll put the intake manifold on. All right, all back together. The uh, torque limiters will line everything up. There's 10 of them. Put these guys back in over the studs. Everything up, hold it in place, and we'll torque them down. Well, this is where gravity is your friend or your enemy, depending on how you look at it. So, we'll just get all of these started. said there's my enemy so. there is my friend so let me get a magnet and get that guy back fun stuff start hooking up the electricals. Um, even if your uh, fuel injectors are crooked, they will self-align. You can just get them somewhere near where they need to be. And then you can line up the junction box and just put it in place. These studs will stop. Uh, you can hear a click and they're on. And don't forget, you don't have to hook that little lock and remove it uh, for each one of these. That's a super pain in the ass. You just grab it firmly, give it a yank, it'll come right off, and you won't damage your fuel injectors or the junction box. All right, we'll hook up the knock sensor, the oil level indicating. And we'll just keep hooking up electricals. Well, I'm starting to get some semblance of a engine getting back together here. Just keep connecting stuff up. All right, just a few final touches. We'll route this temperature sensor wiring around to here. Those. Start locking stuff up. This airflow sensor. Uh, 
I'll put on the covers and we'll be good to go. All right, we'll fill it up with coolant, bleed it, check for leaks. Leaks are bad.